The world has advanced and yet we are seeing resurgences of many other diseases. Time is critical. Technology alone cannot transform healthcare. This is vitally important because this may be the game changer that everyone's looking for. We're making this into a resource to give more actionability to the world for COVID-19. Good afternoon, Prof. Dean Hill. Thank you for having me. Today we want to cover something that's really close to both our hearts, infectious disease. N1 Institute, AI Curate, ID Identify. Can you explain to us what, how these are really making waves in this whole area of infection control? When we think about emerging infectious diseases, probably one of the most common early solutions is, for, is drug repurposing. Because when things like COVID emerge or diseases that we don't understand emerge, we don't have the time to develop new drugs. And even as we know, vaccine development takes quite a while. The, the, the challenge here is we already know that these drugs were not developed for this particular infectious disease. The real challenge is can we combine them together properly? To, to be effective. Here's the challenge. If you take a simple number, say 12, right? We use pools of 12 drugs, all right? If we pick 12 possible drugs for a disease like tuberculosis or a disease like COVID-19, mm -hmm. if you try each of these drugs at 10 doses, because we have to try to try many different dosage yes. levels, et cetera, 12 drugs tried at 10 dosages is one trillion possible combinations. So when we think about Identify, our, our AI platform that we use to develop combination therapies for infectious diseases, instead of one trillion combinations, we run about a hundred, just over a hundred experiments. How do we do this? So it's important to note that our AI platform is not purely computational. We don't take a bunch of old data, feed it into an equation, and have this equation tell us what drugs might work. Um, we run actual experiments, and I actually relate this to crowdsourcing the live virus. We work with amazing collaborators here in Singapore. We ask the virus, hey, does this combo work? Yes or no? Does this combo work? Yes or no? And we're basically painting the corners of these 10 galaxies. And once we have enough data, which is not a lot, maybe just over 100 experiments, we will know what the best possible combination is. Here's the big take home. Good drugs given at the wrong dose will not be effective. At the same time, when you have the capability of finding the best dose, which is challenging, but if you can do that, the drugs that comprise the best possible combination may include drugs you never would have imagined being in that combination. And so, again, we don't have the time or the resources. And when I say we, it's the world. It's yes. not just our team. No yes. drug company can do this. If you combine drug companies, they can't do this. But with Identify, we strategically run a small set of experiments and we will have a ranked list that tells us our best options against COVID-19, tuberculosis, dengue, what, whatever infectious disease we want to go after, we can apply this technology and rapidly design combinations. And in fact, for COVID-19, done in two weeks, we can make this happen. Let's focus on COVID-19 because the whole world is gripped. I mean, we've wasted a lot of time from diagnosis to testing and, and then deciding, should we get a new antiviral? Should we look at vaccines? And it's taking up a lot of time. And as the world opens up, we are really worried about the third phase, the fourth phase. And I think this really is a time to collaborate on all those fronts. Can you walk us through what you've exactly done? Absolutely. And the platform that, that's so exciting that's coming out 
like now? <laughs> Absolutely. Through our institutes, N1 uh, Institute for Health, the Institute for Digital Medicine at Wisdom, we were introduced to a team here that was fully capable of providing the live virus. So they have the facilities, the expertise to have the live virus to study which drugs work well. We consulted with infectious disease specialists and we said we need to collectively pick 12 drugs that are accessible slash affordable mm -hmm. and are capable of being given to patients. And so once we converged on these 12 drugs, uh, we designed an experiment where we provide different permutations of these 12 drugs at different dosages mm -hmm. to these different plates where the live viruses are placed. Mm -hmm. This is where we crowdsource the virus to tell us what the best combination is. Once we design this experiment out, uh, within two weeks, within two weeks, we had a ranked list, and this is backed by real data. We don't use old data. We run the experiments to tell us what the best combination is all the way to the worst, and this is what's important. Our ranked list tells us which drugs are very promising as combinations, but our ranked list also tells us which drugs we maybe shouldn't think about anymore for combinations. When we have the capability to basically find the best of the best, mm. we leverage unexpected drug interactions that can mediate these types of outcomes. So our top ranked combination from this initial study was remdesivir plus Kaletra. Mm. Kaletra is an HIV combo that alone as a combination is not very effective. Mm. And our results agree with the, the world on this. Mm -hmm. Kaletra alone is not that effective. Mm -hmm. But when you combine the two together, the efficacy goes through the roof, right? And the, the, the interesting part here is we found out further why. We were able to show that the different drugs were basically all working together to turbocharge each other yes. to be yes. super effective. I tell people, technology alone cannot transform healthcare. Yes. And what was the most interesting thing is we've spent two weeks identifying this list. Mm -hmm. We've spent two months working on supply chain, drug accessibility, mm -hmm. drug economics. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna culminate in us putting what we call identify online yes. onto the N1 and Wisdom website. Yes. We're making this into a resource to give more actionability to the world for COVID-19. This platform is going to go online and please go to his website, N1 Institute, yes? Or which one? Which one? It's n1labs.org. Okay, n1labs.org. Why? Because this is a platform that the team have freely put out to the world so that any doctor in any country can go in and look for the accessible drugs that they can use in combination for their patients in those countries. This is vitally important because this may be the game changer that everyone's looking for, even as we are looking for a new antiviral, even as we are looking for vaccines. But this is it. Please go on to that site and this is a preview of, a sneak preview of what you expect on it. So back to that question. <laughs> So which are the drugs that you find useful? In terms of which drugs are useful, um, you know, the, the, the top ranked drug yeah. is remdesivir yes. uh, plus Kaletra. Yes. Um, th this is really important because when w clinical trials are reporting the results continuously yes. right now. Beyond that, we also find certain drugs that probably should not be used as mm. well. And I, I will say that I've, I've had family members who have passed away from COVID-19. And uh, we have, one of the first questions we ask is what drugs did they get? And this was not in Singapore, this is in other parts of the world. Um, and you know, it was challenging because the drug combinations they were getting were combinations in our data that were shown to be relatively ineffective. This is, it, this is not a knock on the medical community. There's only so many resources we have yes. at hand. Yes. But when we put these building blocks yes. together correctly, yes. we can take drugs that are not useful on their own, 
put them in the right combinations and we can find utility out from them. And furthermore, when we use drugs suboptimally, there are patients that actually have the diseases that those drugs were meant to treat in the first place, like lupus patients who need certain drugs that are now being deployed for COVID and it's not being used correctly for COVID, so it's not benefiting COVID patients. And the drug supply is running short for the lupus patients and they actually need this drug and this drug actually works for them. This is gonna take a global effort to reconcile so that we can use drugs correctly. We're, we're now fortunate to know that labs from all over the world are asking us for this data mm. so that they're better informed on what drugs they should try mm. and what drugs that maybe they should not try. Maybe I'll ask you another way. If, if a country doesn't have either drug, do you have other combinations that they might be able to use? That's a great question. Our ranked list includes 9,900 possible combinations. Okay. So the absolute answer is yes. Um, if a drug company simp or if a, if a country simply says we don't have this drug, find us another option. And we've already had that. We, we were actually reached out to by a European, uh, a set of hospitals who were, did not have access to a particular drug. And so we've given them some guidance on what's possible. And beyond that, we're actually, we, we did 12 drugs. We're actually on our way to doing 12 more. When exactly is the COVID-19 treatment combination platform AI enabled, available to the community, the institutions and the public. We are going to make our identify information publicly available. We call it identify online. And it will be easily searchable on uh, www.n1labs.org. And that's our site where we deposit a lot of uh, publicly available information to both provide technical data with what our findings are, as well as uh, ways to raise awareness. Finally, I serve on a WHO working group related to AI for health. And so with that, we get to engage with regulatory stakeholders, AI developers from around the world. And again, I'm proud and privileged to have the chance to, um, to represent N1 and to talk about just how important all of the stakeholders coming together yes. quickly yes. and having this open line of communication is to have an actionable response to something yes. like COVID-19. Yes. If we look at the future, the concern actually, in a way, it's not for the developed nations, even though everyone's struggling now, but what can be done for those countries that have far more fragile or virgin health infrastructure could you give us some guidance on this? I think uh, diseases and emerging challenges like COVID-19 raise uh, the issue of uh, healthcare inequality. And so um, our, our intent, first of all, on, for the next step is to engage with clinicians who understand uh, what is available, what drugs are available and more accessible for countries that certainly may not have access to the remdesivirs, mm -hmm. et cetera. And so we will use this opportunity to build another study that looks at a broader range of drugs that are accessible to that yes. other regions of the world. And ultimately, whether it's that study, this study, what we have already, our full intent is to make this a public benefit platform, meaning we don't, we're not selling any of the information, right? It's there for everybody to access. We will open publish it Right? and we'll be reporting it at conferences from around the world. Our goal is to give it away to the world, right? so we can help as many people as possible. Thank you so very, very, very much. Look out for the next installment because we've covered Dean and his life. We've covered N1. We've covered the digitalization of medicine. We've covered infectious diseases. We've covered COVID, the big one. But the next episode will be fun. It's about how these platforms can be applied throughout society and communities, looking at how it can be deployed for the brain, whether it is neural connections, whether it is gamification, whether it's the use of music and art therapy, how we can actually quantify this, making use of the digital platforms that Prof Dino has 
So please stay tuned. Thank you.